Hey, this is Trey. Today we're going to do a movie review, the first one I've done in well over a year. Uh, and this time we're going to be talking about Captain Marvel. So before I even get started, let's go ahead and, and do the full disclosure here. There's going to be spoilers in this review. So don't be a moron and get upset because the movie was spoiled for you because you clicked on a review that says spoiler in the title and the guy at the very beginning told you there are spoilers. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's move forward. Okay, you saw my thumbnail, you clicked it. You know that I think that this movie is incredibly boring, mediocre, subpar, right? So with all of that out of the way, here we go. Brie Larson. The big elephant in the room that, I don't even know if that's like the right uh, analogy to use. Everybody is talking about how she went on the press tour and decided to make like some kind of gigantic political statement about this film, right? Everybody knows about that. And then about half of the people think, yeah, that's right, Brie, go get them. And then the other half are like super pissed. Me, I kind of fall into the category of being pretty annoyed by Brie Larson. You know, I went into the film expecting to be annoyed, and uh, I was annoyed far less than I thought I would be, to be honest with you. And that brings me to an interesting point. For all of the huge setup that it seemed that Brie Larson was trying to put out there about how they wanted this to be this gigantic feminist statement, this movie, as a feminist statement piece, fails. Wonder Woman was more of a statement about the power of womanhood than this movie. This movie has a bunch of people going around telling Captain Marvel not to be emotional, right? And, you know, the funny thing is, I think Brie Larson, the actress, uh, took that to heart because it's really difficult to find many places in this movie where she actually displays any genuine real emotion. Uh, it, it's like she has Botox permanently injected in most of her face. And putting aside what seems to be like really, really weird acting, I mean, perhaps that's a combination of Larson being completely miscast for this film and crappy direction. But I mean, even crappy direction would be a bit of a weak excuse because in a lot of the scenes in this movie, all of the other actors and actresses seem to be completely outclassing Larson. It was like she was in a rehearsal and they were shooting the movie. There are a few moments in this film where Larson comes through as a good actress. But in most of the film, Larson was wooden. It was like watching an animatronic. The strangest thing that I have seen in a Marvel movie in a long time. This movie probably takes the crown from either Thor 2 or Iron Man 2. I'm not sure which of those two was a crappier film. But in my opinion, this one takes the crown now as the crappiest, most mediocre Marvel film. This movie, again, was incredibly boring. The biggest problem with this film is that Brie Larson was completely miscast, in my opinion. The second problem that I have with this film is that the writing just sucks. The writing is just crap. It's boring. The only character's motivation that I cared about was Mendelssohn's scroll character. How is it that a, that a guy with prosthetic mask on his face is able to come through with more emotion and, and, and make me feel more about his character than the main character of the film. There's a scene uh, toward the end of the film uh, where Captain Marvel hands Nick Fury uh, a modified pager. And she goes, here, use this, but only in emergencies to call me. Because, you know, at, this is toward the end of the film. She's, she's going to go fly off and do something so that I guess they can explain why she hasn't even been in the MCU since it started. Right. So she's going to go off into the universe and do some crap. And she's like, only use this pager in case of an emergency. So someone please explain to me why Nick Fury never called her in the events of the first Avengers and the events of the second Avengers. And he only decides to call her when he looks around and he sees people turn into ash. Right. Why didn't you call her on the alien invasion in, in Avengers one? I mean, it would have been over a lot quicker, a lot less bloodshed in New York City. Just crap. Crap writing. Why are you trying to shoehorn a character into this at the last freaking minute? Why is she even part of Avengers Endgame? Right? Like, if you want to bring Captain Marvel about, that's cool. Why is this not the opening of Phase 4? Like, I'm really struggling here uh, to put my thoughts into words on, on this film. Um, let's see. Uh, the opening flashback sequence about her childhood. Um, that was super preachy and annoying, you know. All these big, bad, evil men, you know, telling her, you know, you're not strong enough. And 
oh my God, it's like, I, I can't roll my eyes any harder. You know, to be honest, the truth is this movie was so boring that I'm actually getting bored right now uh, talking about this in this review. Um, this review is made up of like multiple clips where I would literally stop OBS as I was recording uh, to gather my thoughts because the movie, it, it's really difficult for me to even like entertain my brain trying to come up with things to say about it. Uh, <laughs> like putting all of the, the, the political crap aside, like even if none of that was anywhere near this film, this film would still suck. You know, I, I'm just going to going to cut it off right here. Bottom line, this movie was extremely boring. Don't waste your ticket money on it. You don't have to see it to watch Endgame. She shows up at the end credits of this film and ta-da, she's there to, to help the Avengers for Endgame. Uh, so no, uh, just know that she's just going to be there at the beginning of Endgame and nobody's going to know much of anything about her. That That's how it's going to go, right? So you don't have to watch this. Save yourself the boredom, right? There's not much here other than uh, an explanation of how Nick Fury lost his eye, which apparently was a... Uh, from a cat scratch from a creature that's not really a cat. It's a thing with tentacles that comes out of its mouth, uh, which is extremely stupid and weird. Like, I, speaking of the freaking cat, before I shut this review down, what is with the obsession of the stupid cat? It was just a cat until it wasn't. And then when it wasn't, it was just stupid. So there you go. That's what I think about this film. I give it a two out of five stars. It's crap, you know? I only give it a two out of five because I'm sure there are far worse movies somewhere. But yeah, Captain Marvel sucks. It's boring. Don't bother.